Hey guys, welcome to the channel. You're watching Windows to Heaven Art. It is a pleasure to have you with me today. Sometimes when you look at a painting, you think it's cool, but other times you look at a painting and you think, this something about this is special. I, I can feel like I'm actually there and it's inspiring. That is what I have been wanting to capture in my paintings recently. So in the last two videos, I've been exploring how to do that and I came across an idea in that search that I never really considered before and it is on plane air painting. So before I used to look at on plane air painting as a waste of time because it would just feel like everyone's on plane air paintings wouldn't really be as good as their studio painting. And that's not all the time but most of the time it would be that way and, and it was just because in a studio you can take your time, you can control your environment etc. Well, on the other hand, when you're doing on plane air paintings, you're often moving very quick and you have shifting light, etc. But recently, I've realized that I've been painting because I'm trying to produce a certain quality that I think people will buy. What will other people like? And so I'm spending my time in the studio and then I got watching people's on plane air painting videos on YouTube and I just found myself really enjoying it for some reason. And I wondered why. I would go to these people's websites and think the same thing. Boy, their studio work looks better. So why are they doing on plane air painting? What's the whole thing with on plane air painting? As I was watching these videos, I really found myself wanting to do what they were doing. Where you're freed up, you have loose brush strokes, you're able to get in there, get messy, and slap something down. Something about them was really pleasing to me. Something about the process was really exciting to me. So I buckled down and I went out and I tried it and the result is after now doing three paintings I'm just absolutely taken with on plein air painting. Why the switch? It's because I think when we spend all of our time painting what we think others would like we're missing out on painting what we like and when you do that when you paint what you like, oftentimes those are your best works. And on plain air is, I think, a key to unlocking that. You're simply there to enjoy the outdoors and get into literally the scene. So in this video, we're going to go into my first ever on plain air painting and you guys will be able to see what it was like and how I did it. So enough talk, let's jump into it. First things first, I need something to paint on. So I have these cut panels here of cedar wood that I have sanded and am now gessoing to prepare them for painting. And I am keeping everything small in size because I want to have something that I can complete quickly in the field. So now that I got these panels ready to paint on, there's just a few other things we need to make. I have the luxury of working in a studio where I have a lot of power tools and a lot of scrap material lying around, so I actually made my own Prashad box. For the tripod, I have this old easel, and then I have this here, which is going to be my in-between piece. It hooks on like that. Super simple, I just set it on top. So there's no nails, I just glued everything together after cutting the pieces, set it up like that. And this here is my Peshad box. I made it so that it hooks on right like this and it unties in front and opens up like that. And then inside I have this piece here, which I put on the back like that. It creates a little chamber back there that will hopefully hold all my paints. And then I cut this little piece right here, which is just plastic, and it slides in front just like that so that I can put my paint directly on top of it as a palette. Then I have this canvas brush holder. And then I have this piece right here. So what I do is I drape my brushes over the top like that and then I take this bungee cord and I put the bungee cord on the inside just like this 
And that is roughly how it will set up so that I can take my brushes out just like that. So my paints are gonna go right back here. So hopefully this on plane air equipment made from scratch will work. It is totally untested right now, but I'm excited to get out there and try it out. It is going to be a hot one today. So, water, hat, keep the sun off, and we're set. There are a lot of really beautiful areas out here. This is not that far from where I live. It's hilly, it's green. I want to show you guys this. You can see there's beautiful wildflowers on the side of the road. This is a orchard valley. Uh, it is a very vast area and I just love the sky. Lots of sky to work with. There's some bluffs over that way. And then up here on this road, that's where I want to set up. I want to get somewhere up in there and see if I can't find a spot to set up. It is so quiet out here. I love that though. It's easy to focus when you have an environment that is like this. So you can see I have a uh, cedar panel, just a practice panel, something to get my feet wet with on plein air painting. I chose this one. This is even uh, untoned. It's just stark white. We're just going to see how this goes. I got my paints set up here in the back. Uh, they're just stuffed in there. I got my linseed oil starting out. I got my titanium white. And for a canvas this size, I don't need a lot of paint. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that right like that. And then we got some burnt sienna. Sky blue, phthalo blue. I got some crimson here. Let's not forget the burnt umber. And then we got some permanent green light. I mean, I don't need the green because I got blue and yellow, so I can mix green, but I guess I just wanted to bring some of this along. And rounding it off, we have yellow ochre and medium yellow, which is a little bit brighter. And I'm going to keep my dirty brushes over on the right side, separated from my clean brushes, just so that when I get back home, I'll know which is which. So that's my view. Beautiful over there. I'm gonna draw from that and uh, we'll get a sketch put on and get cracking. Okay, let's get just a little bit of linseed oil on there and then I'm gonna go for the umber here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and look at what I've got to work with out there. And compose a composition here. Well, we got a lot of atmosphere going on. And remember, we don't have to paint exactly what we see. We can use a little bit of artistic license. I like this dark tree right down here. So I'm thinking that's gonna be my foreground. And then I got a few different tiers of hills going all the way back to there. And that is going to be very light blue. Sky obviously is gonna be very, very, very light, my lightest value in the painting. And then I'll work my way forward as I paint. So I'm gonna take this and just put it on as a sketch. I think I want my horizon line to be, I'm thinking right about there. So I got this big bluff coming down on the left, something like that. 
And then I got a bluff back there, which is coming up like some something like like that. So beautiful. There's even like this distant shack I can see lit up in sunlight over there. I love that. It's really cool. I'll show you guys. That is so cool. You know what? I might actually just zoom up the composition and paint that out. There's so many different things I could paint. It's so hard to decide. So we're going to do the sketch over. As you can see, I wiped it back with my shop towel here. That's totally fine. I want to go as quick as I can, but I'm also not going to be afraid to uh, do it over if it's not exactly the way I want it. I may ditch the barn, I don't know. The barn, I mean, it would be cool to add, but I just don't know if I like it in this picture, so I might take it out. And we got that tree. Yeah, I think I'm gonna lose the barn. Just for now, anyway. I got a little sweet bee right there. Checking out my finger. Okay, so I'm gonna mix Get some linseed oil. I'm okay with the burnt uh, umber being in this mixture because I do want a little bit of brown in my sky just so long as it's not too overpowering. So I'm going to mix this blue with some of that umber in it. Let me grab some of this white. We'll just see how this looks. It's a bit dark. bit dark so I'm going to add more titanium white. bit more titanium white in the mixture. Very rural spot that I'm at. A lot more white, especially towards the horizon. Okay, there's a big problem with the clouds. There's one over here and one over there, and they look pretty much the same. So I'm gonna have to switch that up a bit. I'm gonna take that one out for now. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and block in that distant line of hills in the background, which is just gonna be barely darker. than the sky. And you're not going to see any green even though those hills are green. Green is a color that is seen not so much at a distance. We're just going to get a slightly darker value. See that? Just barely darker for those hills there. And we're going to get even more dark as we come forward. A little bit more green. I think that looks pretty good. Might be a little too dark, however. We'll see as we continue. Now I'm gonna put in our foremost hill, which is gonna have oh, quite a bit more yellow in it. That's going to go right here, for it to be lighter, just going to lighten it up.
And remember when you're painting something that is relatively plain, like this uh, hillside right here, I want to add in some texture and make it vary in color just to add interest because if it's all just green, one tone, one value, it's going to look uh, not so good. Okay, everybody, I could keep working at this forever, I feel like, and it's a frustrating size because I'm only able to pack so much into it, and as you can see, everything is just so gorgeous out here, and there's so much I want to paint. So I'm going to force myself to stop, so I'm going to pack up. I got my paint in there. I'm just going to go ahead and close it up. So, after looking at the camera, I realize I don't have that much film time left. I got actually like a minute or so. So that means I'm going to have to go back to the home base and load some footage off and make some room on the camera before filming any more on plein air paintings. But I definitely have the on plein air bug.